Although underwater scenes and Futura font may be some trademarks of Wes Anderson movies, there's more to his style than just those things. In fact, there are certain film techniques Wes Anderson uses in all of his movies that makes him so easily distinguishable. So how do you know if you're watching a Wes Anderson movie? Growing up, Wes Anderson had to deal with things like father issues and divorce within his life. As a result, many of his movies are influenced by his personal experiences. In an interview with Criterion Collection, Anderson stated, What I'm more inspired by is something that happened to me, or someone in my life who had a strong effect on me, or a novel, short story, play or movie where the characters moved me or where I was swept up in it. Therefore, one of the main things all Wes Anderson movies have in common is their plots that deal with family troubles. From the loss of a family member like in the Darjeeling Limited, to the reconnection of a disconnected family in the Royal Tenenbaums, Wes Anderson movies always touch on this idea of inner peace both individually and with the people that surround them. This creates for a light-hearted and bittersweet feel that all Wes Anderson movies emanate. Whether they're one of the main characters or just an extra, Wes Anderson always finds a way to include at least one, if not more, of these famous actors. The characters in Wes Anderson movies are always strange and uncommon characters, yet they always have common relatable problems. Most of the time they are characters that either act and mature as adults or mature as children. Take Max Fisher in Rushmore as an example. Although portraying himself as a wise and clever guy, he often makes unwise decisions. Rather than focusing on his academics, Max dedicates most of his time to after-school activities that he started up himself. He also falls in love with an elementary school teacher that is far too old for him. Not only is this framing pleasing to the eye, but it draws your attention more closely to what's on screen. In The Royal Tenenbaums, symmetrical framing is used to put an emphasis on the characters within the movie. It puts the viewer in a position where they not only feel as if they're standing right in front of the character or characters, but also draws their attention onto them and their emotions and actions within the scene. Therefore, this type of cinematography is vital within his movies as it contributes to the viewer's better understanding of the characters. Anderson is also known for his famous over-the-head POV shots where the viewer gets to see the objects that normally would be off-screen. In the Darjeeling Limited, this is used a number of times to show things that the characters are using or looking at, like the trip itinerary. Similarly, in Bottle Rocket, this is also used to show Dignan's 75-year plan. In Wes Anderson movies, costumes not only assist in establishing aspects to a character's personality, they're also often used to indicate an inability to change. In the Royal Tenenbaums, all the Tenenbaum siblings wear the same clothes they did as children, as adults. Margot, for example, wears her thick fur coat, heavy makeup, and polo dresses. Not only does this portray her as a serious and angry person, but it also shows her inability to let go of the child she once was. Similarly, in Rushmore, the use of the Rushmore school uniform is used to indicate Max's inability to let go of Rushmore. After being expelled, Max still wears his Rushmore uniform as if he belongs. Not only does this show Max's infatuation for Rushmore, but it also shows how unaccepting he is of the fact that he's no longer a student there. To personalize luggage in the Darjeeling Limited, to house decor in the Royal Tenenbaums, Wes Anderson pays a lot of attention to the little details within his movies. In an interview with the Film School Rejects, Anderson mentions how important the Tenenbaum house played in the Royal Tenenbaums. He says the movie didn't fully come together after the house was ready, and also says that the house was something that helped the actors connect to their characters. In the interview, he also points out how he purposely placed fathers and daughters in the scene where Royal tries to reconnect with Margot. However, this attention to detail is not only present in the Royal Tenenbaums. In fact, it is present in every single Wes Anderson movie. To provide another example, in The Life Aquatic, when Steve Zissou introduces the Belafonte ship, every single aspect of the ship has been carefully thought out. Not only is this significant as it shows the importance of the ship, but it also is reminiscent of the character introductions we see in other Wes Anderson movies. Familiar image is used in some instances in Wes Anderson movies to exemplify change. In the Royal Tenenbaum, familiar image is used to indicate the change that Chaz goes through. In the Life Aquatic, on the other hand, familiar image is used to indicate change within a situation. In the Darjeeling Limited, familiar image is used in both the beginning and the end of the movie to show the change the women brothers go through over a long period of time. In this case, the change is that they have finally let go of their father. The soundtrack to most Wes Anderson movies has a British invasion feel with artists like the Kinks or the Rolling Stones. As Anderson describes it himself, music in his films play a largely important part. 
Not only does he like to incorporate songs that inspire him, but he also likes to incorporate songs that draw out the right emotions and the tones and themes of his movies. In The Royal Tenenbaums, Wes Anderson uses the song These Days by Nico in the scene where Marco and Richie reunite after 20 years. The song works well with the slow motion by prolonging the moment and making it seem as if it's a moment of love at first sight. Another example where sound greatly contributes to the scene is in Rushmore, when Max and Mr. Bloom go back and forth attempting to get a revenge on one another. Anderson uses A Quick One While He's Away by The Who to glorify the acts by making them seem like simple tasks that were done in confidence and with little care. He also uses it to build up the tension, adding to the tone and feel of the scene. All West Anderson movies have a certain warmth to them. All the scenes are brightly lit with tones of yellows, reds, oranges, and underlying blues and greens. The colors are also fairly saturated. This color palette can often be associated with the warm-heartedness of family and love. However, they can also be representative of anger and hate. Therefore, the color and lighting used in Wes Anderson movies often support the themes and tones of his movies by creating this bittersweet feel. The times where Wes Anderson decides to step out of his usual color palette is in some of his iconic moments. For example, in The Royal Ten and Bombs when Richie tries to commit suicide, the scene is very dark with the dominating blue tint. Not only does this highlight its importance as it stands out, but it also contributes to the melancholy feel of the scene. In Wes Anderson movies, slow motion is used to highlight an important moment or indicate the end of the movie. The slow motion tracking shots often bring his movies nicely to an end by showing the change the characters have gone through. In the final scene of Rushmore, Max and Miss Cross share a special moment. Although seemingly romantic, the moment indicates that Max no longer sees Miss Cross in a romantic way, but still sees her in an important one. Despite all of what is going on around them, as they make their way to the dance floor in slow motion, one can't help but focus on just them. Although Wes Anderson's humor is often misunderstood, there is no denying the amount of thought that is put into his movies. Combined together, all the techniques he uses aim to give the viewer a better understanding of the characters within his movies. Perhaps the focus on individuals in Wes Anderson's movies is not to make it clear that every one of them has problems, but maybe that in order to solve them, they must start with themselves. Their road to self-discovery begins alone, and this is often a reoccurring theme that pops up in Wes Anderson movies. Most often it's not about mending the relationship with others around, but instead it's about reaching a sense of self-fulfillment for oneself. 